stories on health almost always come down to two things, the prohibitive cost of private medical care or a public system dragged into a death spiral by a lack of resources, inefficient management and corruption. Well, not tonight, at least not exclusively. We can't escape the fact that ours is a public health care system in decline or that many can't access proper care because of the cost of private medicine. But it's also true that ours is a solutions-driven country. That's why for a group of Johannesburg-based doctors, it's a case of out with the old way of thinking and in with the new and unexplored. South Africa's healthcare system needs urgent government intervention. A shortage of medicine, a shortage of staff, it's a chronic problem. South Africa is reportedly facing a talent flight in doctors and medical professionals because of the National Health Insurance Scheme. My name is Maria. I've been suffering with shoulder pain for over 10 years. And for me, the only option now is surgery. I'm not gonna lie, I'm slightly freaked out and um, I am scared, but I'm ready for this. In the heart of bustling suburbia stands Johannesburg Surgical Hospital, a cutting-edge health hub funded by the very specialists working here. Granted an all-access pass, we're about to follow Maria as she gets her shoulder surgery. Maria has been diagnosed with an impingement, a tendon rubbing on her shoulder blade. We are on our way to meet the surgeon who will lead the operation, Dr. Yaku Strobos affectionately known as Dr. Shoulder. He's not only an orthopedic specialist, but also the mastermind behind this hospital. Intrigued with the fact that he has his own hospital, I decided to join him at his home to find out more about him. My uncle had a big role in my life in decision making because he was an engineer and I liked the way he was doing things and he was like a, a role model for me. So that made me ask him the question, what do I do? And he says, study medicine. And I'm a little bit compulsive probably. I said, okay, then I will become a doctor. In private practice for over 20 years, he's always had big dreams and one dream in particular. I always wanted to do a, a hospital where the doctors can make this, the choices of what they want. I wanted to give the people that is working with me something that they can leave for their children as well. Bureaucracy and red tape meant he waited years to get a license to build a hospital. By 2018, the dream came into reach. With a license in hand, he just needed some funds. What sets Johannesburg Surgical Hospital apart is that it is owned and run by the doctors. Most specialists here have taken their destiny into their own hands and invested their own money into the project. How much, you ask? Well, let's just say it's substantial. He needed an enormous 920 million rand for the development. The bank approved a loan, but on one condition, he had to raise significant deposits. So he approached his colleagues and sold them his lifelong dream. They managed to raise 320 million rand. This meant that the hospital was private, steering clear of public listing and enabling doctors to prioritize patients over profit. People you know, look at private hospitals where doctors have a financial input. It's a frowned upon concept. Professor Jay Pillay is the academic head of vascular surgery at Wits University. He practices in private, public and academic sectors. The initiation of this has to be policy soundproof. And by that I mean when a doctor buys a share in a hospital, there's always a chance of perversity. There's always a chance of competition, tribunal, investigations, and there's always vulnerability to the doctor. So if you create policies in a new hospital and say, this is how the doctors are going to behave, then that policy can be learned by new, other new hospitals. 
nobody could get more than 5% share. There's not one guy that owns this thing. Everybody is at the same level. The day I am stopping to work at the hospital, my 5% shares, I have to sell it. And I have to sell it to a youngster that I have trained to take over from me. And the reason for that is simple. You get a hospital where the guys get older, they keep their shares, but youngsters can't come in to renew it, and then the business goes down. There's a lot of doom and gloom always in our country, but at least if you can create these pockets of excellence and bright lights, at least it makes it all worthwhile for all of us and uh, for our patients in particular. We've got world-class specialists here, so we can offer patients the best that they would get anywhere in the world. <laughs> Meanwhile, our patient, Maria, is just about ready for theater. If you're squeamish, I suggest you look away now. Maria's operation is about to start. So this is my posterior portal. This is like music. You have to create medical music that makes people's lives better. There's a little bit of fluff around here. I'm going to clean a little bit. If I walk into theater, I'm putting on the surgeon's cloak. Then I want things to be done in a certain way. This is the shoulder bone, the tip of the shoulder scapula. It's the acromion, and I'm cleaning it now, like you can see. The amazing thing walking into a theater where I have the right equipment, the staff now understands what I, I want to achieve, and the team is getting together. I remember watching other surgeons doing arthroscopic surgery. Actually, when you do it yourself, that feeling of you can't believe it that you're actually doing those things. It's like you want to do this. Wake up. And now we're just going to repair the, the wounds. We have finished. And when I pick up the knife, I want to be doing it 100% right. When I get to other things, then we, we, we enjoy life. I like to enjoy life. And he certainly does just that. Dr. Strobos showed me some of his handiwork around the house, from bells salvaged from shipwrecks to building his own brewery. I, I like to smoke a cigar. Mm -hmm. And this room I built to sit down and enjoy good wine. I'm seeing trains, the brewery, woodwork. Where I'm flying. You, why do all of these things? I think I want to live life to the fullest. We have one chance. Eventually, you will sit on your deathbed and say, I did want to do this and this and this and this. I never want to say that. I want to do everything to the fullest. <laughs> It's hard to be here and not think of the millions of South Africans who can't access quality health care. This is where the national health insurance comes in. Public hospitals are plagued by corruption. So if you don't introduce the NHI, that improvement will never happen. But you can't introduce it with a broken system. There is much debate about the National Health Insurance Bill. It aims for universal health coverage, regardless of income, granting equal access to health care. However, concerns arise as the government gains control of a substantial sum, around 500 billion rand. Past corruption and mismanagement have eroded trust in the government's administration of the NHI, especially when viable alternatives are available. Perhaps we should state at the inception that a different healthcare system is mandatory and necessary. And one of them are what we call PPPs, the public-private partnerships. If we start saying that we have many, many private hospitals with limited occupancy, can we create policy to get some of those hospital beds in some economically feasible fashion to be used by the state? 
Mavericks like Dr. Strobos are exactly what we need. If you think about it, the easier thing would have been to complain about the state of healthcare in this country, pack up and leave. But he decided to stay and build something that will last generations. I want to be a proud South African. I want to do something for South Africa. And the way I want to do it is I want to create things that I have the passion for. And I want the government to help private individuals, private companies, private people that wants to make a difference. I want that to happen in South Africa. That's my dream for South Africa.